something to tell us. Amen. God got something to tell us. Don't you let the Lord, let, I'm excuse me, don't you let the, the devil of this world keep you from coming to the sanctuary. Right. Amen. Amen. I, I keep telling you it's, only, you know, it's only a fear tactic. Is it real? Yes it is. Should I be fearful? I shouldn't be but a whole lot of people are. Amen. Should I prepare myself for what's to come? Sure yeah. should. Amen. We got to be wise. Amen. Amen. You got to be wise. Amen. Amen. Okay. So we I, I'm not gonna dwell, I'm not gonna dwell on all that. But I'm just aware of my surroundings. Yes. Amen. The book of Mark, chapter 5, verse 21, King James Version. And when Jesus passed over by the ship into the other side, much people gathered unto him, and he was nigh unto the sea. And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet and besought him greatly saying, my daughter, my, look, my little daughter lieth at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay your hands on her that she may be healed and she shall live. And Jesus, uh, and Jesus went with him and much people followed him and thronged him. And a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years, of blood 12 years, and had suffered many things at many positions, of many positions, and had spent all that she had and was nothing bettered, but, got, but rather grew worse. And when she heard Jesus, heard of Jesus, she came in the press behind, touched his garment. For she said, if I touch, if I may touch uh, but his clothes I shall be whole you see that and straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague Jesus immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him turned about in the press and said who touched my clothes and the disciples said unto him thou seest the multitude thronging thee and, sigh, and sayest thou who touched me and he looked around about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman fearing and trembling, knowing what had been what was done in her, uh, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith have made thee whole. Go in peace. Be whole of thy plague. Let's let's pray. Father, we thank you this morning. We give you all the honor. Give you all the glory, give you all the praise. God, I decrease now that you might increase in me. Father, if anything I've done, God, that was unpleasing in your sight and the sin I've committed, God, I'm standing before you now to ask you to forgive me. And God, I, I know you've forgiven me now and I receive your forgiveness. God, as I, I stand, as I stand behind this desk to begin to, to, to preach your word, oh God, I ask you, God, to send forth an anointing, God, that make preaching easy, God. And I pray this word that you gave me this morning for us. God, that it would penetrate the very core of our spirit in the name of Jesus. God, I know it, I know that God, you said in your word that you sent out will not return void. So God, we thank you, God, that it's going to accomplish and hit the target this morning. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you glory. And just before we do, Satan, we bind. We bind every work that you send in the name of Jesus. Any, any, any traps, any tricks, anything that's come to hinder. Bind it in Jesus' name. And we thank you in Jesus' name. And the church said, Amen. Amen. Consid con uh, excuse me. You see in the presence of Almighty God. I was getting ready to dismiss you. <laughs> <clears throat> I was getting ready to dismiss you. <laughs> Amen. Somebody probably didn't want to come. But. Hey Amen. I just want to share this word with you this morning because I just believe that it would help us in such a time as that we're living in. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> and and, I, and I, at no point have I came to glorify the enemy. Amen. Amen. Now, uh, the enemy has been defeated. 
Amen. The corona coronavirus that that's 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 hitting the hitting this state, hitting the world, or wherever it's hitting at, it's not new. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's not new. Things show up in our life uh to 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 force us sometimes to do what we should have already been doing. Yeah, you should have already been washing your hands. You should have already been sanitizing and staying clean. And 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 you know, amen. Amen. But I saw a post on, on, on out there on social media, and I loved it because uh, it made so much sense. And you know, we can identify when I say it. Um, you know, when the corona the, the corona virus was mentioned, everybody started preparing themselves. Amen. How long has this gospel been preached, and and nobody's preparing themselves for the return of Christ? Amen. You understand what I'm saying? We should always be ready when anything shows up. You don't wait. Until it rains before you buy an umbrella. Amen. You should bring your umbrella. I already have an umbrella because it's not a matter of if. Just a matter of when it's going to rain, right? So if you don't use an umbrella, guess what happens? You're going to get wet. Amen. So 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 don't, don't, don't you know, I, I, I keep telling you fear and fear and faith can't work in the same place. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Fear and faith cannot work in the same place. Jesus you know, he said it all the time to his to his disciples, fear not. I have not given you the spirit of fear. Watch this. Anytime you see an angel show up in the Bible, in most cases, the first thing he said was, fear not. Okay? So we don't need to be fearful. If we had a hundred people, we still could have, we still could have service. Why don't you decide to go home? <laughs> They stand a hundred people. You know, don't don't be assembled together with a hundred people, right? Amen. You know, a lot of folks get their church ain't got ten, and they still in their service. Amen. Yeah, I mean, but it's okay. I'm, I'm not trying to shoot down nothing nobody's doing. But let me get to the Word of God. I want to. I, I want to. I want to show you something this morning. I know you probably seen it before, but the Lord gave it to me in a different light, and I just want to share it with you. And I pray that it, that it blesses you. Uh, my topic this morning is I don't know. There's so many things I've been hearing. But uh, I want—I I just want to do this right here. I want to tell you how to deal, how to deal with your present dilemma. How to deal with your present dilemma. This ain't the this ain't, this is not the last dilemma that's gonna show up in your life, but the present dilemma that you're in right now, the thing that's troubling you the most. We're gonna show you how to deal with it. Amen. Uh, uh, for every problem in the earth, the answer is in the word. Amen. So, but 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 you got to allow revelation. You got to allow revelation to hit your spirit. Revelation only comes from Holy Spirit. Amen. So so with all the you know, st st cut the TV off. I'm not telling you to cut it off and, and get down on your knees and pray 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 pray. I'm not telling you that. We should always be praying. But cut the TV off because there's so much being said. And then and then and what it, what it does is with all the stuff you start hearing, I keep telling you, faith and fear comes the same way. Amen. Amen. Romans 10 17, but it says so so faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So the more that we, we hear and obey the word, the more that our faith grows. Amen. So then now, now with all the stuff that's being on TV that's being said. It's causing fear to set in. It's casting a blanket of fear over the whole world. Amen. Amen. They shut down events. They shut down this. They shut down that. And, and, it, and it's probably a, a good, a good pre preventive measure. I'm not saying I'm not against it, but but be careful. Okay, be careful that it don't it don't it don't uh, outweigh what you believe. Okay. So there comes a time in your life when you just have to make up in your mind that. You know, uh, enough is enough. You get to the point where you don't care who knows about your situation. The only thing about it, you want to get some relief. Amen. Situations besides what's going on in the world, they come to, to bombard us. Amen. They come to steal our focus. They come to distract us. Amen. Amen. Everything that comes in my life is not a distraction. Amen. Okay, because at some point I can become a distraction to myself. But the thing that that's, that, that, that's, that's bombarding you the most right now, what's what's in your thought pattern? What's the biggest thought that you have right now? That's the thing God want to give you relief of. 
It might not be what's going on in there. It could be a situation in your marriage. It could be a situation in your relationship or whatever it is on your job or, or in your family. It don't matter what it is, but God has a remedy for your dilemma. So there's a way we can deal with it. Amen. And the thing about it is we shouldn't have to be forced to come to church. Now you watch how sanctuaries start filling up just like it did on 9-11. Watch. Because when fear sets in, uh, the church starts to grow. And then when the church starts to prosper, it thins out. But trouble will drive you to God. It's designed to do that. Amen. It's nothing wrong with trouble. Trouble can be good. Just don't you keep getting in trouble. Amen. Oh, and and, and don't, don't think I don't know where I'm going with this. It might sound like it's off, but I promise you I'm going to get you to, I'm, I'm going to get you to the end. Amen. 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 So keep your spiritual antennas up and your spiritual ears open. Amen. 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 Now watch, 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 watch. So it doesn't matter, you know, what you have to go through. And it, and you don't even sometimes you don't even care who God uses to get you to your deliverance. You don't care who God, somebody may invite you to come to a service. And right there in that place, if you would open yourself up and don't be skeptical, because we so we some we so uh, 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 we, we, we we we're very superstitious, Amen. and you know we're very superstitious people, and we're very skeptical. Amen. If I don't know you, I won't open myself up to you. Amen. Well, you really don't know God, Amen. like you should. Amen. We need to form that relationship, so anytime we need to go to Him, we're not a stranger. Amen. He says, my sheep know my voice and the stranger, they don't follow. Amen. It's a lot of voices out there speaking. I promise you, it's a lot of voices speaking. Don't allow people to pull you out of the place where God wants to deliver you from, deliver you at. Amen. I mean, uh, you, you going to leave here anyway. You're going to leave here anyway. You, 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 most of us going to see that. Most of us. I didn't say all. Oh, let me go ahead and see everybody will see them. How about that? Yeah, because everybody going to be separated from this earth realm. So we put in, in that aspect. But but for you to lay down in a coffin or in a box, everybody won't do that. Somebody going to be alive when he cracked the sky to rapture his church. Somebody going to be alive. Amen. So don't take don't take Hebrews nine twenty seven where it says as a point of a point unto man wants to die in the judgment. Don't look at that as everybody going to see death. You can't. I mean, you can't. Everybody going to die. You can't, you can't, you can't say that because the scripture don't match that. Amen. Amen. Sometimes the scriptures seem like they contradict themselves. Did you know that? Sometimes it seems that way, but at, at, at no place in the Bible where it's contradictory. Amen. That's why we got to study the word and rightly divide it. And I guarantee you that puzzle, it'll, it, it'll be put together like a complete puzzle. Amen. Because we got to stop just reading and study it. Because I'm telling you, there's some things that, that you know, the Bible says we should we can know the mysteries of the gospel. The mysteries of the word. You can only know the mysteries of the word when you get a when you get a, a have a relationship with God. The Bible says the deep call upon the deep. Amen. When your desire get off, when your desire for God goes beyond just the surface of just scratching the, the scriptures. And you start to D-I-L-V-E, delve or dig. Then you'll see the book in a whole different light. You'll really see another side of God. Because there's so many sides to him. Amen. Amen. God will never allow us to fully figure him out. Huh? Talk back to me. Amen. And, you know, just because he delivered you one way in a, in a situation. And that same situation shows up again. He might not come and deliver you the same way. Yeah. Amen. Okay. So all so all things that I'm in right now ain't because I it's not because I sinned. Let's understand that. All right? Let's move on. So it says uh, 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 so you must so 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 uh, you're tired of being stuck in the same place we got the week in that situation. It seems like whenever you go, whenever you try to go talk to people about your situation, you only leave more frustrated. You leave more frustrated. And a lot of times we're talking to too many people. Yeah, we're spreading too much of our business. Amen. We're spreading too much of our business. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're at the point now where no matter what it takes, you're not going any further until you encounter Jesus. 
here's where our answer is. Here's where our answer is. Every situation that I encounter in my life is to drive me to God. Jesus, Holy Spirit. Amen. Is to drive me to him. I don't care what it is. I don't care what it is. It's designed to drive me to my source. He's the source. Amen. Psalms 46 and 1 says, he said, I'll be a very present help in trouble. Amen. Don't wait. Don't just wait till you get in trouble to encounter him. Is that fair to God? Every time we find ourselves in a dilemma and he ain't heard from us, he haven't heard from us in months. But then we find ourselves in something, then we go crawling to him. Is that fair to him? Hmm? Is it fair to God that we that our service to him is less than our service anywhere else? Is that fair to him? No. Hmm? I mean, you know, we, we tell people he's everything. He's all I need. But in the midst of it, I put him last. <laughs> oh, glory to God. I'm going somewhere. That's what this woman in the scriptures, that's what she did. Let me, can I show it to you? Amen. Yeah, yeah, let me show it to you. Oh my God, you, you, you wanted me to go there. Look at, look, at, look at Mark 5 and 26. And had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and find herself uh, was, no, was nothing better but, uh, uh, but grew worse. I'm looking for, I'm, well, I'm, I can't see it. See it, see it, see it, see it. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm looking for when she went to the doctor's. Mm. 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 Straight way to find her blood. Uh, but anyway, I think I think I can tie it in right here. Uh, I think I can tie it in right. Here. Verse twenty six. She suffered many things and went to many positions. So 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 so. so hearing this, you know, she she was trying to get a a a miracle or a deliverance her own way. She went to all the doctors, many doctors. That's what it said. And you know, you know, if I don't care, sometimes if you got health care insurance, sometimes you might have to pay a copay. Maybe they didn't have copays back then. But but it said that she spent all. Did it say what it said? Uh, it said said that and had spent all that she had. So now she broke. See, a lot of times we wait till we down to nothing before we come to God. Amen. And that's the way He wanted. You know, sometimes he'll step in and block people, block them from getting to others. Then we get mad with folk. Yeah, God, God got away. You heard that song, God Blocked It? God Blocked It. He didn't let me go. So God will block some stuff in my life to keep me from getting to it. Because some stuff, God, see, God with all the, all the he got all, he got all the wisdom in the world. He got more wisdom than everybody on this earth combined. Amen. So he knows when I don't need something. Okay, let me go a little further there. Keep digging. He, if God is trying to get the glory out of something, then he's going to make sure that he closed doors. He's the only man that can close, the only one that can close doors that no man can open. And open doors that no man can close. Amen. No, 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 no. I'm not saying because God used doctors too. So I, I tell you, if you get sick, pray and still go to the doctor. I know, I know a woman that 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 didn't believe in going to the doctors, and 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 she believed that God could heal her by faith. Praying woman, she prayed and prayed and prayed, and she died. Now I'm not saying now I'm not saying this is what she did, what I'm gonna state I'm getting ready to make, but there's a difference between faith and foolishness. Amen. There's a difference now. Amen. Because I keep telling you, if you if you go into the den of if you go into a den of lions and they ain't had lunch, you can have all the faith you want. You go in there, they're gonna have lunch, buddy. They're gonna eat you and your faith up. <laughs> <laughs> so that's ain't that foolish? 
So sometimes we just sit around. Because I'm telling you something, man. God can do anything. Look, Ephesians 3.20. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we can ask or think according to the power that worketh in me. So God can do anything. He asked, he asked Abraham a question. Is anything too hard for the Lord? Some things, some things, some things we think is hard, too hard for God. He said, with man these things are impossible. But with God, all things are possible to them that believe. This woman got her miracle from God by faith. And see, this is the thing in this season that God wants us to keep strengthened is our faith. He don't want you to, he, I gave it to you last week. Simon, Simon! Satan desires to sift thee. But I pray that thy faith fail not. See, that's some stuff that God going to leave us in so it can strengthen our faith. Amen. 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 Watch this. In Exodus chapter 12, the Bible said that the death angel was coming. But them that had the blood over the blinds of their house, the death angel had to keep going. He couldn't, he couldn't make a stop. He could yield and look. But he couldn't stop by and do nothing. Stay covered. Amen. Under the blood. Amen. Don't let the enemy make you act out of character because all this stuff has hit the atmosphere. Amen, somebody. Amen. Amen. Just, just do what you're supposed to do. Amen. Amen. So, mm -hmm, you realize that the people that you were dealing with in the past couldn't help you get to God uh, for you. So, you knew it was time to travel a little further. Sometimes, uh, uh, are the people that you've been hanging out there with all these years, they can't give you nothing else. Amen. So sometimes you need to find you some new friends so that they can take you a little further. Amen. See, if you keep hanging out with the same dummies, you know, they, they, they don't get nothing. Two alcoholics hang out together. They ain't gonna stay sober. I mean, foolishness. Faith versus foolishness. Hang out with somebody that's sober if you're drunk. Amen. Either one, either one or two things gonna happen. They gonna stay sober, you gonna get sober, or both of y'all gonna get drunk. Somebody gonna draw somebody. But you got to when you're trying to do something, or even trying to get somewhere in life. If you, if you be trying to become prosperous in business, don't hang out with people that's broken. and their business not working. What that sound like? The Bible said the blind lead the blind, and they both fall in the ditch. Amen. 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 So listen, you got to travel a little further. That means you got to, you got, you got to learn some. You got to introduce yourself to some new people. We got to learn how to network. Learn how to network. Even in, even with ministry, learn how to network. You don't know by you connecting with somebody what God have by y'all connection. You don't know. You really don't know. Amen. Amen. Because a lot of times, man, we looking at people out and you don't know what God put in them. Something, something for you might be locked up in them. I've heard preachers say, I've heard preachers, pre preachers tell people, my destiny is locked up. Your destiny is locked up in me and you can't leave until you get me. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. I'm on my way to my destiny. To that place that God has called me to. If, I, if, if God sent me to you, it is for you to help me. It ain't you. You might not help me to achieve it. You understand what I'm saying? You, you know, you might, you might. Let, let's just use an example. You might come here. God may send you here. It's just something you got to get for a certain season. It's just like saying, if I'm, if I start school, do I stay in the first grade for twelve years? No, I got to learn what I'm supposed to learn and test out successfully and go to the next grade. I mean, you can use the same metaphor in, in, in the ministry. One ministry cannot meet every one of your needs when it comes to getting you to your destiny. Amen. 
Y'all, 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 y'all don't want to hear that. Hey man, I mean you I mean you got people that's been in ministries for 50, 40 and 50 years with people. 40 and 50 years. Now what is that person leading you gonna tell you new? Tell you different. I mean, because I understand Holy Spirit do release revelation and all that. But when you get what you need, you got to move on. Because staying too long can be detrimental. Amen. Amen. Moses only led the children of Israel for a season. Then he left the scene and then the next man steps up. Amen. Amen. Will you be next? Amen. Where is your next at? I'm just throwing some stuff at you. I know you don't think about this kind of stuff. I'm in the right place. I ain't going nowhere. <laughs> okay. Well, watch this. Before you even start a career, you go to college. So once you stay in college, you know, most people stay in college. Let's just say four years for an average bachelor's degree. Four years, okay? Get the bachelor's degree. Do you stay in college or do you go and start working a job? So why you don't just stay in college? Because you've got what you needed. Now you take what you got and then you go exercise it on that and start that career. Amen. 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 Come on, because there's some, there are some things that you learn as you go. The Bible said four lepers came to Jesus and he told them, you know, they wanted to be healed. So Jesus, you know, told them, uh, I think he said a few things to them, prayed for them. And then he said, go show yourself to the priest. But they were not healed when they left Jesus. The Bible said they were healed as they went. Amen. And then the Bible said only one came back to thank him. That's how we are. God used somebody to speak a word to my into my life, and we don't do nothing. We, don't, you know, I've always been taught when when somebody it ain't got to be it ain't got to be somebody that's a prophet. Amen. It could be one of your brothers or sisters in Christ. Say, you know, the Lord, you know, want me to share this with you, maybe this will help you. They share it with you, and it was God, and it comes to pass, and you don't even thank them. You don't do nothing. Don't take them to lunch or nothing. <laughs> hey Amen. We, we don't do nothing. Well, that, 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 that's their reasonable service. Well, then, no, you know, you know, you're know, the trouble of love. Because they hadn't told you, maybe you'd have missed it. Maybe you would get ready to go right. And they said, look, the Lord told me to take you to go left. And it, and it saved you a lot of heartache. They helped you get delivered. See, we're looking for deliverance. Somebody cast the devil out of us. No, some devil's going to stay in you until you leave. We, we can get some out. Amen. We can get some out. I mean, come on. We all got some stuff. That we need to be delivered from. Amen. Don't, don't, don't get that twisted now. We all got some stuff that need to come out of our life. Need to leave our life. I'm going to put it, let me put it in something to make you feel a little better. We all got some stuff in our life that need to leave our life. Is that a little better? Did that soften up a little bit? Okay, I'll, come, I'll keep coming back. It's you, it ain't him. <laughs> I think I always tell people, man, when you leave God, He in the same place you left Him. He in the same place. He ain't moved. Yeah, but He always with me. You walked away from Him. So you begin to tell yourself, that I got to get to Jesus. I got to get to my answer. Whatever it takes, I must get my deliverance and my healing. Mm. Mm. Watch this. No matter what time. That you decide to bring your burdens and issues to God. He's always waiting. He's always waiting. It don't make no difference. See, God don't operate in time. He don't operate in time. Y'all get the scripture yet? I give you the hint. Give Amen. You the Amen. Yeah, yeah. Psalms 120, 121 and 4. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall, no, he shall neither sleep nor slumber nor sleep. So a lot of times when we on the phone late talking to people, they tired. <laughs> God never sleeps no slumber. Anytime that you up and you want to talk to him, he's available. But no, we want, I want to take my pile of problems to somebody else. I want to take my issues in the bag to somebody else. That's what I want to do. 
I don't want to take them to God because the truth of the matter, if I, if I wanted to get delivered from something, I can get delivered. I can. You, you, ever, took, you, ever, you ever had somebody to, to, to call you and you know the situation they were in it might, might, have, it might have been over and they tell you, I, I, I want to kill me. Anybody? But 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 the, but the cry wasn't really that; it was something else. They were just showing that I need attention. I need somebody to talk to. That's all it means. Yeah, because in, in, in any time the enemy comes, you want to take life. You want to take my thoughts. God come to give me life. Yeah, he come to give me life. So that's why we need to stay in constant. Communication not only with God, but you need some people in your life. We need people in our life. Everybody in the Bible had somebody in their life. I know you think about Joe, poor Joe. Joe had somebody, he had somebody in his life. His friends came to him, they didn't understand what they were looking at. Joe was looking wrong. Your friend, if somebody come to your house, you they find out that you're going through something. And they come to your house. And you open the door and let them in. They sit there and look at you for seven days. Don't say nothing. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of friends are those? They don't say, "Can I pray for you?" You know, they don't. They, I mean, come on. They, they, you know, they, they, and then when they finally start talking, they start saying stuff about you. You, you done done something. <laughs> you know, man, the world you looking like you looking and saying you ain't committed a sin or something. I'm talking. about You need some people in your life. That can look not only cut you, but they can help, help you get to your healing too. You, know, you understand what I'm saying? We need some people that's mature. Because some people, man, they jump on you, man. They, they, they beat you up, boy. They beat you up. Can you have a conversation as a Christian without quoting scripture? Most of us can. We can't even we can't even speak to people in the morning and don't put God in it. How you doing this morning? That's the knowledge. Baby. What about you? The devil still he's still beating you up. <laughs> you can't just say good morning. How you doing? It's okay. Everybody know you're saying it. Look at your car. You got all them stickers on it. Everybody know. Everybody know. Everybody know you, Mister Mister Preacher. I don't go around telling folk that. It's not important. What's important is that they see Christ in you. That's what's important. Amen. Amen. Are you understanding what I mean? You know, uh, we can go to outside activities as Christians. It's okay. Because a lot of times we we shut ourselves in and we shouldn't. Oh, I can't go bowling. I can't go to the movie. I can't go out and eat a cup of ice cream. Why do you can't? <laughs> I can't go to the, the go-kart track. Why do you can't? Oh, it's a big one. I can't go to the beach. <laughs> Why do you can't? You, you can't keep your eyes in your head? <laughs> what? Something wrong with you. I mean, what, what, what kind of life do you have? What kind of life do you have? You know, my... You know, at my job, you know, when, when, when the technicians make a certain amount of money, they reward us. I said, us. They make the money. But everybody get rewarded. But so every activity they have is always on Sunday. So one of the guys said, you know, yeah, yeah, shoot. McNeil, he ain't going. He only, the only thing he goes to church and work. That's what he said. <laughs> so I looked at him and I said, look, don't go there. Because my thing, well, you know what I said to them? If they really want to do something for the whole company, let them, let, us, let them give everybody a bonus. Let them give everybody a bonus. I mean, something that's going to really help us. I said, oh, that, don't go on a function on Saturday and Sunday because you know I'm already off. Let's go on Friday. Doing work hours. <laughs> then they don't say nothing. Hey, Amen. I mean, make it, make, it, make it conducive for everybody. You understand what I'm saying? They always go on Sunday. I ain't going. They went to the paintball rounds. I mean, I definitely ain't going out there. <laughs> they hit me in the face one joke and bruise me up. I go to the, get the nine millimeter. We ain't gonna be no paintball. <laughs> <laughs> yes, son, get down and let's get down, boy. Let's get it. 
No, but I'm saying, man, we can, as we, we, as, we as Christians, man, we can do outside activities. Keep everything in your life balanced. Because you know how easy it is for us to go back into something that God brought us out of. This is my whole point. Be careful. Be careful how you, uh, there's certain things that you just be careful. Anything you do, do it in moderation. Amen. I'm going. Now watch this. So, so, so we can call on him anytime. God is not like man. He's always concerned. People ain't always concerned about us. People get sometimes people get tired of you calling them and talk. Oh Lord, what is it now? Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. yeah. What is it now? They see your name, Jesus, <laughs> Christ of Nazareth. Yeah. Deliver them. <laughs> We should, I mean, we shouldn't be a, we should not be a burden to people. Amen. At what time are you going to form a relationship with God so you can go to God for yourself and, get, and ask God to lift some of this stuff from you? Amen. People, other people got business, they got stuff they got going on in their life too. You can call me at any time. You can call me at any time. My phone is always on. Never cut it off. Some people cut their phone off and you better not call them out the ten. Hey man, I'm going to go to bed at 9 or 10 you still can call me. My phone is on. I'm going to hear it. Ask me why my phone stay on. Because the alarm in the church is connected to me. So when they call for the alarm, like somebody's going to have to answer. Hey man, where the deacons at? Where the deacons Right, Oh, he's there, right here. Come here, deacon. Yeah, so I mean, but, but, but that's not the point. The point of it is, is you can call me anytime. I might just sleep. I might not even hear the calls. I, but my phone is on. But God, he never sleeps. Take it to him in prayer. Take it to him in prayer. And then you can call somebody. Too. You can always call. Now, I don't know. God will use somebody. Yeah, we ought to take time when somebody calls. Pray for them. Pray. Your powerful self. Pray. Be that powerful help. Help somebody. Help somebody lift the burdens off folk. Watch this. Don't you ever get so high that you can't call somebody and ask them to pray for you. I don't care what your title is. You know, because leaders do that kind of stuff. I go to some other leaders. There's somebody, there's somebody in the congregation can pray for you. You do know that, right? Amen. Amen. If we're praying one for another, you can pray for me. Intercessory prayer is designed for us to intercede for others, but you still can intercede on your own behalf. I heard somebody say you can't intercede, intercede for yourself. What, what that sound like? That sounds like a lie. You know what I mean? You can't pray for you. I pray for me all the time. Lord, if you don't keep me today, I'm going to hurt them. <laughs> That's the Lord changed my mind here. Amen, y'all. I mean, come on, man. In the heat of the moment, you better know how to pray. God take look, the man in the you think God can, can God can God take a desire? Can God change my desire? Can he? Yes, he can. The Bible declared that, that there was a man in John chapter 5. This man had laid at the pool of Bethesda for 38 years. That man was there 38 years. 38 years, man. Jesus came by and asked this man, will, will, will you desire, do, uh, do you desire to be made whole? That man had been there all that long. I think he forgot why he was there. And instead of him answering the question, he started making excuses. Every time. Because the Bible said that at a certain time, our angel came down and troubled the water. And whoever got in with any kind of, whatever condition they, they had, they were made whole or delivered. And when Jesus asked him, would I be made whole? He said, well, every time I try to get to the water, somebody get in before me. Sound like an excuse to me. Jesus didn't ask him about what, you know, uh, why he didn't get in the pool. Who got in before him? He asked him that. He asked you, he asked him, Do you want to be set? Do you want to be set free? When we come to this place, we can be set free. 
We didn't come to get each other's phone number to get on the phone and gun bump. We came here to be educated, empowered, and set free. Amen. Your business is not a secret. Your life is not a secret. Things that God wants people to see, he got a way of showing them. Hello. Amen. Amen. Come on, talk to me. But that don't mean you go around spreading your business. Your joke will take that joke and be ammunition. You gotta know you gotta know them that labor among you, huh? Yeah. Know them that labor among you. Okay? Whew. Can we go a little further here? Now since, now since God neither sleep nor slumber, uh, 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 we can leave our problems or situations with him and then sleep. So we have sweet sleep. Do know that, right? We both don't have to stay up. Why are you gonna stay up worrying? And then you know you got to go to work the next morning. Well, you got to do something. There's no worse feeling than to stay up all night than the sunrise and you ain't had no rest. Then you got to try to function no function that day. It, it, it changes your whole day. And then you stand up and you don't worry about that situation all night long and it's still sitting there looking at you. What you going to do? You going to keep worrying about me or what you going to do? Well, the situation start talking to you. What you going to do? Who going to win? Me or you? No, 1 Peter 5, 7 says, I can cast that thing on God. Cast your cares upon him for he cares for you. We don't know how to give God stuff and leave it with him. We'll go to God in prayer. Let's give it to him. And then we'll talk about it the whole day. People see you. That's all they see on you. It's your situation. You walking around. How you doing? Blessed and holy. How you doing? That's blessed. Like you got the building on your back. Man, we, I mean, I'm, I'm not telling us to fake it, man. Either we're going to believe that God can do it or not. Amen. Right here with yellow tape around your house. My house is prayed up. Amen. No, no spirits come in here. There's no spirit in there now, you. You got your house all quarantined. <laughs> Only one in the neighborhood. And then got a big cross on it. And you got that painted red. The blood of Jesus. You religious. Enemy, that's what the enemy gonna hit. <laughs> yes, son, see how much God you got in him, or you gonna cuss the devil out. <laughs> but listen to this. So, so, so now. Ah, let me see, let me see. So now the woman. She realized that all of her other avenues were exhausted. Hmm? She found in there down the choices and she heard that Jesus was the only one to take care of her situation. We sometimes look for God to heal us or deliver us in all the wrong ways. Amen. Pop this out. Open this up and put it on me. Amen. Give me a small demonstration. Dominique, I need you to read out loud for me. Can you read out loud? Okay. Okay, I need you to read verse 27 of Mark 5 and verse 28. Put it on me. All right, listen now. Now, for the demonstration, I'm Jesus. Okay, I'm Jesus for this demonstration. Because I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you something. Now, hold on a minute. Don't you, don't, don't, don't you get ahead of me. Okay, so verse 26 says, after she spent everything she had, she heard that Jesus was passing by. Amen. I want you to help me with this demonstration. You're going to be the woman. But he's a man now. He's <laughs> going to just demonstrate as the woman. Say this only an example. Yes. Okay. So I'm Jesus. Come on. Read out loud. Yes. 27. When she had heard of Jesus, uh -huh. she came in the press behind and touched his garment. Hold right there. Come on. Okay. So, so Jesus passing by. And he's just walking. 
And all of a sudden, her faith kicks in because she's doing what she's thought about doing after she found out that he was coming by. She, she reaches up and she grabs his garment. Are you seeing this? Yes. But she didn't grab the bottom of his shroud. She grabbed the prayer shawl. Amen. And when she grabbed the prayer shawl, she grabbed the corner. See, you see what he's grabbing? Yes. It's the reason why these tassels are on this tallit or prayer shawl. It's called a tallit and a prayer shawl. Jesus wore this everywhere he went. It was a custom for men to wear these in public. I'm making a point. Women can wear them, but not in. You go check it out. Okay? It was, it was a this, this was a public thing right here for men. If you go to Israel today, men still wear these prayer shawls. A woman couldn't go to the west. See, a man took this to the western wall, which was the prayer wall. Okay? The, 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 the wall over in, in Jerusalem. Where they went and prayed and put the, the prayer request in the wall. But they covered their heads. This was called the secret place. Y'all missed that. This is called the secret place. It's not no closet. <laughs> this was the secret place. They go to the prayer wall, cover themselves and pray. Okay? Now what? So the so what the woman was grabbing was she was grabbing the border of his garment, and these tassels on this prayer shawl are symbolic of the commandments of God. Amen. Thank you, sir. Now, what are you saying? Wait a minute. So read verse 28 for me. After she touched it. For she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. So after she touched it, read the next verse. And straightway. And immediately. The fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. So God told me to tell us. That whatever dilemma, this is how you deal with the dilemma, the present dilemma. Whatever dilemma that you presently have, if you grab a word from God, Amen. God Almighty Jesus, if you catch a hold of a word from God, it'll make you whole. Amen. It'll make no difference what's going on in the land. Hold on to the word. What he showed me. Amen. Yeah, I don't want you walk around with your shawl on now in public. <laughs> People think you're crazy because we're not in, in, in the Holy Land. Amen. You're not in Israel. They wear these every day. Amen. Amen. If you if you look at some of the if you look at some of the pictures, you always see Jesus have a shawl on. It was a part, you know, some of them I think some of them call them cloaks. Yeah, it was a part of their it was a part of their attire. Amen. And now, now, now we we have perverted them. Amen. You know, any, anything, any to the word, the word pervert means to change something from its original intent. Amen. And that's what we do. We 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 will. We, we, I mean, you give us enough time, we'll come up with something. Amen. We'll come up with something. And studying that. Studying that the, 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 the Talit is said that only men wore them in public. Said a woman couldn't go to the wall with a, with a Talit on. Amen. They enforce it. The, the police there enforce it. Amen. They enforce it. So, so, so point being made here. So if there's some things that God don't want <coughs> only men doing, that God wants only men doing, why women doing so much? Why are you doing everything men doing now? Not only in the churches, I'm talking about even out in the world, they driving trucks. I'm talking about 18 wheelers. They're doing everything. I mean, that ain't, I mean, man, no, that's a man's job. Amen. Amen. They laying brick now. They're doing everything. What, what, else, what, what else can you think of that women doing that men men normally do? They they, they, they the providers now? Huh? They they they, they soldiers now? There's some things that me, women never done, but now they say now women are making history. Y'all heard that? I mean, I mean, I mean, you know, 
I guess they doing what they got to do. Look at this right here. See that with the tassel on it? Mm -hmm. Priestly garments. Priestly garments. I had a guy tell me at the job the other day. I said, oh, you're growing a beard, huh? Yeah, but this thing get ready to come off. I said, you know, beard was a part of the covenant. He said, yeah, but I'm not a Nazarene. I said, well, you ain't a priest either, but you wear priestly garments. I told him, don't go there with me because I know a little more than you think. <laughs> well, yeah, you're right, man. But yeah, you're good. I know I am. Y'all running around here as bishops and you're wearing uh, a Catholic bishop uh, attire. Okay, don't go there. I told him, don't go there with me. <laughs> yeah, I told him, I said, well, how you going to do, how you going to come against one, but you won't come against all? Huh? He done wrong with a man wearing that beard. Now you done, you done, that thing grow. Now nah, it's coming off. Why you let it come on? <laughs> it's okay to change something in your life if you find out it's not right and you're doing it wrong. It's okay to change that. You do know that, right? It's always good to, to turn around and repent. No worries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You find out you're trying to go to California and you're going to a New York, that's going to be a long trip. <laughs> you don't have to go around the world to get to California. You know, you do know that, right? Because see, we're now we're on the East Coast. Amen. Amen. Where, 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 where's California? West Coast. Amen. Are we understanding this now? Amen. Amen. Somebody. How how to how to deal with your present? Dilemma. You can't, you can't get, you can't get delivered any kind of way. Amen. Yeah, any kind of way. So make sure what you're doing is what God called you to do. Amen. Make sure of that. I'm telling you, because what we find ourselves doing is, if God hadn't told me to do something, then I find myself. Wasting a lot of time that I can never get back. You understand what I'm saying? The woman with the issue of blood, she wasted all her money and time. Mm, watch this now. Oh my God. Man, you know, because I'm looking at the scripture. The Bible says in verse in verse 27 of Mark 5, it said, and when she heard of Jesus. So maybe at that point she hadn't heard of him. Because when she heard of Jesus, she didn't have nothing else to lose. She was broke and sick. I told you sometimes that's the way, that's the way God wants us. Sometimes money distracts us. Amen. Sometimes the stuff that you got in your life, it keeps us from Jesus. So then sometimes God has to allow us to lose that. Get some stuff out, the, out your life, out your way, so you can just see him. Amen. Just see him. You ever been in a relationship with a person? And you thought you loved him? Have you? Amen. They go both ways now. I'm talking to you, I'm talking to you too. <laughs> I'm talking to you. Yeah. And th but things, you know, things, but things change in relationships all the time. Yeah. And then you thought that the thing was going to be this way turned out being that way. Amen. Because a lot of times we don't listen to God. We listen to flesh. Because a lot of times, look, in most cases, we, God, we ain't praying. We're not praying and say, God, is this the one? You know, because a lot of times God would just give us, he gave us free choice, free will. Amen. He gave us free will. Amen. Amen. And a lot of times we're looking outwardly. Amen. If they got, if, if they list line up close to what we're looking for, that's it. Amen. Amen. They might be short the way you like them. Everything in the right place. They smile and make you milk. There you go. 
Amen. Can I tell you, can I tell you something that can I tell you something that, that, that I don't think is right? For you to bring them bring the person that you're dating to your pastor and ask them, is that the one? Now, the Lord showed them something and they call you on the phone and say, hey, look, you might want to be careful with that relationship. Something like that is different. But you bring, you bring them to the service, they you look at them. I'm sitting there, they ain't policy shoes. <laughs> <laughs> they're not in their pants. <laughs> How you think that person going to feel? Very uncomfortable. I look, I'll never be going back to your church. Amen. <laughs> Never go back to your church. Yeah, y'all the church. Y'all need to change y'all name. Y'all the perfect church. <laughs> ain't nothing wrong with y'all. I, I don't even know why y'all meet. Y'all got it all together. Amen. No, if y'all date each other, date, court, get to know one another. You got because there's some. I don't care if they, if you think they're the right one. You still there's some things you have to come to common ground on. Everything ain't gonna be perfect. I promise you. <laughs> Everything will never be perfect. It ain't gonna be perfect. Sometimes, and then sometimes it's us. And sometimes it is us, man. Let's be honest about it. it. Ain't always them. Because the thing about it is, they can see all my flaws, but I can see all of theirs. Amen. See? Amen. If you want to know, that's why a lot of times you hear people say, uh, uh, Let's, let's get the wife to introduce the husband because they know him. Yeah, don't, don't get nobody, don't get nobody to just know you in the spirit. Let's introduce this great man of God. He go home and beat his wife. That kind of fooling is man. I mean, it's a lot of that stuff happened for real. Amen. So this woman heard of Jesus. And she says, I got to try it. She tried it last after everything else, but she still, she tried it. But the thing about it is, give me Romans 12, 3. I got to say what, uh, uh, Romans 12, 3. The thing about it is, uh, she had what it took to believe him. She had what it took to believe him. Romans chapter 12, verse 3. Read it for me. You know? Read for me. Uh huh. Okay. So God have dealt to every man a measure of faith to believe God for whatever He needs. There's a measure of faith in everybody, even unbelievers. They have enough. God gave us enough faith to believe Him for anything we need. Firstly, being for for unbeliever is salvation. It's not there. Amen. Amen. And then when you go to Romans 10, 17, it says, now faith, no, excuse me, uh, but faith cometh by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. So my faith is increased by how much I hear. The more I hear, the more my faith grows. Now watch, that word hear in the Greek is obey. So the more I obey God, the more my faith is increased. Amen. Man, the enemy don't care about how much stuff you got. He don't, he, he don't care about how well you articulate. He want to know how much faith. Because that's what he's after. He not only, he's not gonna, if he get my faith, there's nothing left to me. He got me. If he can get me to believe what he's telling me, and I gravitate toward him. He knows that. That's why I keep telling you. God was telling the disciples. When he read that. When, when it says Simon, Simon. Uh, Satan desires to sift you. It meant all of them. It meant all of us. Mm -hmm. Satan desires to sift all of us. But, but Jesus said. I pray for you. That your faith don't fail. See? So this woman had enough faith. As an unbeliever. To believe God. For a miracle. I want no healing. It was a miracle. It was a healing, but it was a miracle. Now watch this. So she, so so the thing about it, what got me was, is that Jesus, he was on his way to Jairus, Jairus' house to, to lay hands on his daughter. By the time he got to Jairus' house, the girl was dead. 
The girl was dead. But that woman got her miracle. Sometimes we are so dignified. We don't want people to know what's going on with us. She didn't care. She wasn't even supposed to be in public with her condition. But she didn't care what people thought. That's why she was stronger. She could have been on the ground crawling. Mm -hmm. In the book of Mark, I think it's chapter 10, there was a blind man sitting there. He was, he was sitting by the roadside begging. He was in Jericho. He missed Jesus going in to Jericho. But when Jesus came out, he was in the right place at the right time. One pastor, there was two beggars there. But he says, Jesus, my son of David, have mercy on me. And the disciples start telling, man, shut up all that noise, all that, all that hollering, making noise, trying to disturb Jesus. He kept saying it. The Bible said that the more they told him to shut up and hold his peace, the louder he got. And the Bible said, Jesus, he still Jesus in his tracks. And looked at him and told him, come to me. Now the thing that got me was, whew, glory, the thing that got me was what he done indicated that he could see before he got to Jesus. Because the Bible said that he cast off his garments. Give me, give me Mark chapter 10. I got to show it to you. Let's get there. I got to see what I want. I think it's Mark chapter 10. Down deep, it's deep down in there. Look at verse 46. 10 and 46. Are you there, somebody there? Amen. Read from it. And they came to Jericho. Uh-huh. As he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great number of people, Blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And many charged him that he should hold his peace. But he cried the more a great deal. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man, saying unto him, be of good comfort, rise, he calleth thee. Watch verse 50. And he, casting away his garment, <laughs> rose and came to Jesus. Did anybody lead him? No. It is said that say he rose, but first of all, what did he do? Cast off. He cast off his past. You can't hold on to what's been holding you and come to him. Amen. You're going to have to get rid of something Coming to him. Amen. He rose, cast off his garment, and came to Jesus. And then what is that? Watch this now. This is what sounds contradicting to me. When he gets to Jesus, and Jesus asked him and said, What was thou that I should do unto thee? And the blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Go your way. You already can see. Go your way. What I gave you helped you get your miracle. Thy faith has made thee whole. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. He could already see if he cast it off his garments and walked with Jesus. Could you imagine how far off Jesus was? Have you thought about it? Now they were on the, that's the road. They go that, that boy, this right here is a good point here. There was the road, and the man, the Bible said the man was sitting by the road. And see how far off it was, but it was a lot of people. Amen. Probably was saying stuff. He got, hey, Jesus, son of David, can you help me or can you help my brother out? <laughs> and the people around him told him, man, stop making all that noise, man. The Bible said he got louder. Jesus stopped. And the Bible says, commanded him. I told you what the woman grabbed on this prayer shawl was the prayer. Boom, she grabbed that right there. Those were symbolic of the commandments of God. See, everything on this delete, this prayer shawl is significant. Everything on it. We just wear them and don't know what we're putting on. Amen. See? Yeah. 
It was that custom. So if you wear it in here, why you can't wear it out there? If you got power in here, why you ain't got power out there? We got a lot of power in the four walls, but when you come out the four walls and your power is diminished, what, what's going on? He's the same God. He's the same God. How am I help somebody else get delivered and I need to be? Amen. Have you about that? I'm moving, man. I'm moving. So sometimes God would allow our situation to get, get worse before it get better. The woman in the situation was no better. She went to all the physicians. It was no better. But before they get better, uh, uh, we have to seek God with our whole heart. Seek ye first, in Matthew 6, 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All of his righteousness. All these other things shall be added. We want God the way we want him. We want, to, we, want to, we want to walk before God the way we want to walk before God, but if it don't match the word, God is not obligated to move. Amen. We can't never manipulate him, but we try to. Amen. Let us need something. We'll be standing at the door before the, before the people get in and open it, unlock it. Yeah. And just need to get in and pray a little bit. And you get on off and you're like, ah, go. Who that down there? Hallelujah! Need something. <laughs> and then when we get it, God don't see us for a while. Come back in and glory! God said, What's that sound? I don't know that sound. <laughs> Woo! Open door for me, please. Okay, watch this now. Uh, 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 uh. So, although we feel like there's no hope for our situation sometimes, it even feels like that God Himself has abandoned us. Y'all felt that way? Y'all felt like God was nowhere in sight? Y'all felt like the thing that God told you was going to come to pass? You know, he might not have put no time on it. But then we start getting weary and well-doing. Start getting weary and well-doing. Man, I, can't, I don't know. I don't know whether. You know, you, you have been to a place. God gave you, I mean, a direct word. You know, you know it was God. And time passes. And you said, man, I don't know who told me this. <laughs> I don't know whether God said it or not. You, 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 no, nobody but me. Amen. Okay, let me, let, let, me, let, 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 me, let me let me let me flip the script then. You ever you you ever minister to them, you know, pray for a lot of people, minister to them and all that, and you see things happening in, in their life. Amen. Then stuff in your life ain't moving. It's moving a little bit, but you see them growing leaps and bounds. <laughs> You prophesy to him and boom, it popped right up. But then your situation is, is, is moving like a snow, uh, a snail. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Amen. Then, 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 because I'm telling you, man, look, when, when you look in the Word of God, prophets got depressed. I know of two of them. I just call their name Jonah and, Eli and Elijah. Both of them asked God to take their lives because they were depressed. Hey man, your name ain't wrote nowhere in the book now. You ain't wrote nowhere. <laughs> I'm talking about great, I'm talking about people that the Bible mentioned. They were four hours out showing us that we, okay, in the New Testament said Elijah was just like us, a man like us, with like passions. But he had but but he had to suffer some stuff too. Look at the apostle Paul. Here's a man in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 that had great revelations, had been to the third heaven, but had a problem. My God, now, 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 you know what the word salvation uh, re really mean? You got to lay back when you say it really mean. You know what it really mean? Amen. Complete deliverance. I bet you don't believe that, do you? See, we don't have salvation in every area. Amen. Yeah. So there's some stuff still fighting us. That's why we got to keep coming to him. You got to keep coming to the water. Amen. The Bible said, when he that is perfect shall appear, then we shall be like him. Hello. Now, 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 I'm talking about, I'm talking about, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna be with, without anything then. But the word perfect now, be ye perfect, for our perfect means to be mature. Yeah, we can't be childish. First Corinthians chapter 12, 13 says, when I was a child, I spake as a child. 
I've done, I've done things like a child, but when I became mature, grown, grown up, and I put away even the way I think like we sometimes we think like immature people. Okay, the Bible said when Jesus told him, he said, suffer not the little children, let them come unto me. He laid hands on them. He said, accept your faith as like a little child. See, children can believe you if you tell them something. They believe it. That's my mind. <laughs> but then God tell us something as a children, we don't believe it. Man, half the stuff we hear, we don't believe it. We believe it when we hear it. And then we leave here and we forgot what God said. The Bible said is, you know, it's like, give, give, give me, give me first, give me first, give me uh, James chapter one. Yeah, give me James chapter one. Some of us jacked up. And the word of God clearly shows us we jacked up. We come every Sunday and we hear the word. James chapter one, let me get there, hold on a minute. And verse, let's see, verse 22. Read it for me, Lot. You there? Amen. Read it for me. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Hold on there. So the Bible said, be ye performers. Performers, doers are, be, become the word. Isaiah chapter 55 says, uh, my word that came out of my mouth will not return unto me what? Void. So we are a word out of the mouth of God. We are a word in the earth that God sent here to show the world what the world, what, what God looks like and how he acts. Amen. Performers of the word. Come on. Lovely, come on. Next verse. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer. Hold it right there. Hold it right there for a minute. A lot of times we're hearing the word, but we're not performing it. We're not applying it. We're not becoming it. And that's one of the biggest problems. We need to be delivered from procrastination. Amen. We keep putting off our change. Amen. He sent the word to heal them. He sent the word. That word from, it comes to, the, to deliver me. Read the rest of it. He is like unto a man hmm. holding his natural face in a glass. <coughs> Lose it. <laughs> For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. So so my thing is now you come to this place. We, we come here. God show us ourselves in the word because the word is the mirror. This is what it's talking about when a man look in a mirror. You see the reflection. The, the word will show me what spiritual condition I have. Amen. Then I leave here and forget what I saw. Because we all need some change now. Amen. We all need some change. Yeah. So the word, that's, that, that's why a lot of people, I don't know why I can't read the word. Because God, you, you know God going to show you. That's why when Moses came up the mountain shining, the people went and hid themselves. Moses didn't even know his face was shining. But watch this. One, one, one revelation was they was looking at the law. The law would show me my condition, but it lead me the way it found me. So that's why grace, that's why Jesus came to fulfill the law. Because the law was what? Perfect and good. We can, we could, he knew we couldn't keep the law. That's why he fulfilled it and put us under grace, man. He knew that. Amen. We, great, great, we think grace gives us a license to sin. Amen. No, grace gives us enough time to repent. Amen. Are you understanding what I mean? Amen. Amen. So let's not get that. Let's, let's not get it all mixed up now. So when we come to this place, uh, even when you, you got to wait to get when you sitting at home. Oh, if you read, if you read, if you read. <laughs> when you sitting at home and you open the word up, it's going to show you where you are. The word came to measure us. The word is the measuring rod. Anytime you want to know where you are, open the word. Thank you. Open the word. Stop all this closing your eyes and popping the Bible open. It's not a good way to read the book. 
No, the way you read the book is start at the beginning and read it all the way through. I always tell preachers, man, it's a sad commentary. If you call yourself a preacher and you have not read the Bible all the way through from cover to cover at least once, it's sad. How are you going to preach something you don't know? How the Holy Ghost going to bring back? He said one of his assignments is to bring back those things, you know, to, to my remembrance. How are you going to bring back what you ain't put in? That's why you can't quote scripture. You ain't read them. He would jack them all up. Oh, let's see. Oh, no, just open the Bible and read. It's okay. We're trying to be deep. Come on, Holy Ghost. No, open the Bible. <laughs> open the Bible. It's right there. It's right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's right there. <laughs> be deep. We're trying to be deep in front of everybody. Listen to this right here. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to come around. I got to come around. I'm going to keep you too long. So although we feel like there's there's no hope for our situation, sometimes it feel like God himself has abandoned us. But the truth of the matter is God has a set time for our breakthrough. We just need to make sure that we are in the right place at the right time. This woman felt in her spirit that if she could just get her hand, get her hands on that word, this, this commandment. That's where her faith was at. Her faith was in if she could just see, see the thing about when you got a problem and the altar call is and the altar call is made, God honors you coming up. That's your faith. Nothing might not happen when you when you leave. Nothing might not happen up here naturally. But it might something happen in the spirit. But then you sit there, knowing this unity the Lord talking to, you just sit there. What you come for? Pride will make you sit in the seat. I don't want nobody. Man, somebody look around you can see right through it. That spirit of deserving is, 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 is deep. Somebody be talking to you and you seeing something totally opposite. Oh, I'm good. Good for the fire. <laughs> good fuel. Good candidate for hell. And we're scared to tell people the truth, man. Come on, tell people the truth. Tell people to watch around the wall. If you see the wolf coming or the sword coming and he don't warn the people, the blood is on him. If he warn the people, they don't take heed, the blood is on them. I'm going to sound the alarm. I'll never stand up here and not sound the alarm. I don't care. This word tearing me apart too. It's, re it's reconditioning. It's reconstructing. Amen. Now listen to this right here. So uh, 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 she said, if I could just, if I could just touch a part of him, she just wanted this right here. Certain things are a point of contact. That's what the prayer show is today. Things are symbolic, anointing oil. Some people still use handkerchiefs, laying on their hands, and and the, the tali. Watch this. So she just exercised her faith, and God honored her faith. Amen. Hebrews eleven and six says, "But without faith, it's impossible." Please God. God don't want your money. He don't care how many tongues. You can take your tongue and let it flip over in your mouth, jump out and jump back in. That, 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 don't, that don't impress God. God want to see, you know, how your faith looking. Amen. How your faith looking. And the thing about it, you ain't got to be saved to get a miracle. Ain't that something? But now I'm going to tell you something now. It's a dangerous thing to get, to, to, to get delivered from something and not be saved. That's a dangerous thing. I'm telling you. Uh, Matthew chapter 12, verse 43 says, When an unclean spirit has come out of a man, it walketh in dry places, looking for a place to rest. When it finds, then it comes back to that same house, bringing seven more spirits, more, more, um, seven more spirits. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. So you need to be born again so that something can occupy the space. Amen. Amen. That you can fight some of them off. One time you was possessed. Amen. Come on, man. We some of us still act like we possess sometimes. Yeah, man. Come on now. When you when you get to a place, you you stop coming to the sanctuary. You possess with something. Something ain't right. You miss church all the time. Oh, I just love God. He knows my heart. You're going to hell that way. That's a that's a that's a cliche. Yeah, yo, our heart need to be changed, man. We can't have church at the house by yourself when we when we're meeting. We need to meet together. The revelation is the devil might have came from the devil, you got. Bring it over here and put it on the table. Amen. Bring it over here and put it on the table. 
The Bible said there's no private interpretation of the scriptures. Bring that revelation you said Holy Spirit gave you. Let's look at it. Let's take a look at it and see if you walk in. The Bible says uh, uh, examine yourself and see if you be in the faith. Amen. Bring your stuff. Come to Bible study. We study the Bible. You can ask questions then. If they're wrong, we'll help you. Amen. Amen. How you going to grow? You can't grow by yourself. No man is no island. Can't grow by yourself. Tell me, show me in the Bible where a man was about. I'm, I'm not, well, I know John was on the island of Patmos, but they took him over there and dropped him off. Amen. You're on the island by yourself. You can't make it by yourself. Amen. Can't make it by yourself now. You'll start talking to yourself. Yourself will start talking back. And after a while, you'll be schizophrenic. You will be. You'll be schizophrenic. All right. Give you, let, let, let me move on. I'm going I'm, to I'm, I'm tie it in. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and get this right here. Uh, 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 Galatians 5, 7. Be, so he says, he did run well. Who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? Huh? What? Watch. Watch. Looking at a whole bunch of preaching. Amen. That's a, that could be a dangerous thing. Now, Paul had led these people in the spirit to God. The Judaizers come behind him and start telling them, you got to live law and grace. You got preachers still preaching the law and grace to the church, and that's why people are confused. Amen. All they want to do mix. It just don't stay mixed. Amen. It don't stay mixed. You let it sit, you let it sit, shake it up. It'll mix. But you set it down, it's gonna separate. It's gonna separate. After a while, if it's if it's water in it, it's gonna separate. And the law puts me back uh, in bondage. Amen. Hello, man. When people start preaching the law to you, it's going to put you back in bondage. Amen. 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 Grace, God's unmerited favor. Watch all the works. And he said the letter, the law kill it, but the spirit gives life. Amen. Amen. Mm. Okay. So God is seeking those with a right motive. Look at that. Those that are, are desiring him and not what he, he can do for them. You know, we do that a lot. God, what can you do for me? What you got for me today? Word. <laughs> the word is the only thing to bring change. Some some only come for the you know, some are some gonna hang around Jesus, Jesus for the fish and the loaves. You know, you know that was there was a mixed multitude that came out of Egypt with them. And there's still a mixed multitude in the church today. Mm, let's see what he got for me. If he ain't got nothing for me, I'm a, I'll give him my all. But if I can't get nothing, I'll go somewhere else. I'll serve the devil and God. Can't do both. You can't have two masters. Matthew 6, 24 says, no man can serve two masters. Is he going to love one and despise the other? You got to make up your mind. Whom you gonna serve? Amen. Everything in the kingdom, your life will not be perfect. You're gonna suffer persecution. The Bible says they that live godly shall suffer, suffer suffer persecutions. People will lie on you. Just don't let the lies be, be let, don't let them be true. And some of the stuff people say about it, oh Lord have mercy. You talking about that one? Hey Amen. There's some talk out there about you and me. What people said about us. Jesus asked them the question in Matthew chapter 16. Who do men say that I am? Who men saying you are? You a back door man or front door man? Uh oh. Uh oh. Are you, are you living a double life? Because there's a lot of preachers out there that say on the down low. There's a lot of stuff out there, man. Say that on the down low. It says a lot of Foolish stuff happening at barber shops now. Well, I don't go. Got nothing to cut. <laughs> All right, Carolyn. <laughs> I mean, what you go? I mean, they always told me barber shop rules for if you don't want a haircut, don't get in the seat. Hang around these barber shops. People talk a lot in the beauty salons. Beauty salons and barber shops, you get the latest gossip. The word I think the latest word you want to hear it, go to the barbershop and 
Because the truck barbershop had the beauty salon. The barbershop was in the front. Beauty salon was in the back when I was a little boy. That's the way they had them. They were combined. Get my hair cut. We get our hair cut. Mama was in the back getting hers fried. <laughs> y'all don't remember? Y'all didn't y'all, y'all, y'all really combine them back then. They, they probably do it now. But I don't know. But anyway, uh, yeah, we got to watch all that stuff, man. Just be, be, be a man. Let a man be a man. Yeah, no, man, don't, 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 don't let somebody say, hey, you know something, something. They say, well, that's no suspect. It's not good. They don't know which way you want to go. Then you walking like a man pimping the more you switching. <laughs> you need a good breakthrough. Hey, man, good breakthrough, man. This stuff in the church is not, man, we, I mean, you know, we, we don't, we, we're not, we're not pushing nobody out. But don't come in here with your, with your, with your wrong practices now. Two men ain't gonna come up in here and hug nothing. I'm talking about you sitting over there, y'all hug. Oh, I just love him, man. Look, loose your hole. Hey, man, it's a lot of churches. It's a lot of churches that they don't preach against uh, homosexuality and lesbian, lesbian, lesbianism. They don't preach against it. It's in the word. We shouldn't hammer it every week, but every now and then, men can rinse it down, jack it up. Amen. We don't need no more progress men. Soft men. Amen. We ain't going to that. Just need to be delivered. Now, you see, if you, if, if, I'm not going to talk about it, but in Romans chapter 1, go there and read it. You can go there and read it. Not, not now. I know you everybody looked down to my. Let me find it. Not now. Write it down. I'm telling you. God is against homosexuality. You actively practicing it. He's against that. He's against all sin. Let me say it like this right here. All unrighteousness is sin. That covers it all. That covers it all. I, I, I have a discussion. I have a discussion with a woman this morning. She feel like, and you know, she felt like it's okay uh, for, for, for church folks to, to, to go to clubs and dance and all that kind of stuff. I said, well, I said that, my opinion is I don't think they should we should be in there. She said, well, that ain't got nothing to do with our salvation. I said, it might not. I said, but it, it might cause somebody to look at you a different way. You over there dancing over in the club and you come over in the church, we can't sit you down. That spirit, they don't know which way it wanna what it wanna do, which way it wanna go. Amen. Amen. I just didn't want to argue about it because we were in the wrong place, but I'll tell you one thing. If I'd have had a one-on-one, could have been out about to let go ahead and put my gloves on. Let's go here. Okay. So, 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 uh, so we can't allow, we can't allow the enemy. To block our path with things of the world. See what I'm saying? God wants us to endure until the end. Uh, he's tired of people being lukewarm. Being lukewarm. Undecided. About their walk. Yeah. This woman didn't allow anything to stand in her way. She had a determination that she was going to get what she needed. Amen. God wants us to have the same attitude to as this woman had. Amen. Amen. It's time out for for wanting the blessings of God and not wanting Him. It's a lot of times people come in and they want, when they got a situation going on, ain't even saved or nothing. And they, uh, they hit a hard place and they come in and they come up to the altar for prayer. You ask them, you born again? No. You want to be born again? No, I ain't ready. So you're telling me you're ready to go to hell. I mean, that's where you're going if something happened to you before you receive Christ. See, I mean, let's just be strict with people. Amen. We ain't, oh y'all, you, you got to meet them where they at. I am with the word. So the man be born again. That's it. Our message shouldn't be changed. Now the thing that God changes sometimes, He changed the method, but His message will never change. He may, he may come with a different approach. Yeah. Amen. Paul, when Paul said, "I become all things to, uh, to all men that I might win some," Paul won't talk about. I'm gonna go and sit and smoke a blunt with you. <laughs> Man, you know him. <sighs> Man, look at him. They know you don't either. <laughs> Pass that. I'm just saying, man, because a lot of the stuff we're doing, man. I mean, you, you look at some look at some of these jokers trying to talk about they are bridging a the gap from the world to the church. Man, ain't no ain't no bridge. You got to come in at the door. Jesus is the way to God. Jesus Christ. Ain't no other way. John 14, 6. He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man come to the Father except through by me. 
Yeah, it's, it's the only way. Us as born again believers, we believe the only way to God is through Jesus Christ. Some religions say you can go straight to God. Y'all, y'all believe what you want to believe, but uh, I'm gonna stay over here. Amen. He's the mediator. He's the go-to. Amen. Don't change it. Don't let don't 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 allow people to make you compromise the message. Hold true to your confession. There's a lot of things that's gonna try. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Amen. Amen. How to deal with your present dilemma? Come on, put them feet together. <laughs> Man, 